Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. By now you should have the table of values. 17, 7, 1, minus 1, 1, 7. Am I smoking? Am I? 31, 17, 7, 1, 1, 1, 7. Domain and range. X is all real. Y is greater than or equal to minus 1. Because this graph goes roughly like this. See, zero is one, one is minus one, one goes like this. So it has a minimum value. The absolute value, on the other hand, is quite similar, except it goes down like this and then up. So it's actually in three pieces. So, for this, now I want you to take a good look at this. And now I want you to tell me, write this in piecewise notation. So, actually no, sorry, not my bad. Take a look at that note you could. The problem is you don't know exactly where the x-intercepts are. That's a pain in the bum. So I'm going to give you an easier one. I want you to graph absolute value of x squared minus 4x minus 5 and give me the domain range, the critical points. going to have two of them, and this one's are easy, much easier to read or calculate, and then write it in piecewise notation. Okay, so pause the recording, graphic, give me domain, range, critical points, and piecewise notation. Okay, welcome back. So I'm hoping by now Data table, 16705898, and you're going, what the heck? Well, if you've drawn the graph, if you drew the graph, you would have seen it goes like this. And the nice thing about this graph, it goes down, and it goes up, and it goes down, and it goes up. And it touches right at 1, sorry, minus 1, and plus 5. So you've automatically got two critical values there, minus 1 and minus 5. You can read them out the graph, which makes it a lot easier. Unfortunately, it also means you really should make your data table a smidge bigger. But, eh, life. Mr. Calculator can fit out those numbers. 5, 0, and 7. So you can see your critical values right on the table. Life is so much easier when Mr. Calculator does the work for you. Now, domain. X is all real. Range. Y is greater than or equal to zero. The critical points. Minus one and... Sorry. Minus one and zero. And five and zero. Now, Piecewise notation is a pain in the bum. You have to look at this graph for a moment and realize everything below minus 1 and above plus 5 is your standard parabola. Because it should continue and go like this, but it doesn't because of that absolute value function. Anyway, so for, let me see x is less than minus 1, and x is greater than 5, we have the standard function. It is x squared minus 4x minus 5. 
Now, we don't normally write it this way. We'd split it up like this. Now, it does depend on your math teacher. When x is greater than 5 or x is less than minus 1. Now, the problem is, what's in the middle? Well, in the middle, it's going like this. And observe, it will keep on going like this. This is the opposite or the negative. A reflection across the x-axis, so it becomes minus x squared plus 4x plus 5. So it's the opposite, or x squared plus 4x, sorry, minus x squared, thank you, plus 4x minus 5. Now someone's going to ask, what about the less than or equal to signs? Does it have to be the middle term less than or equal to? No, it doesn't. I just arbitrarily put them there. You can put them here if you want. X is... But you could write it x is less than or equal to minus 1. Just nobody really cares. Choose one or the other. Now, technically, I'm supposed to go y equals. Write it like that. Sorry, guys. Now, that's the important part. This is what you have to be able to do. Besides the graphing and the table of values, honestly, that's Mr. Calculator. This uh, piecewise notation, you have to be able to do. It's the only thinking part you have to do. Because everything else, like domain and range and all that, Mr. Calculator can do it. You guys got to be able to do, do this piecewise notation. Now, that's it for me. Take a good look at this, think about it, and try the homework.